This is a tutorial on how to make a CMOS inverter in Cadence Virtuoso layout and schematic. The inverter is a very important component that will be useful in our later projects. So here we have the Cadence main page. We will first create a library for our project. Select File, New, Library. We will name our library Project 1. Then we will have to attach an existing technology file to our library. For this project, we will use the TSMC02D library. Select that and attach it to our library file. To begin the project, we select Project 1, File, New Cell View. Rename our cell view inverter. And it opens up the schematic L to do our schematic work. So using the add instance function from the keyboard shortcut I, we will use it to add the PMOS and NMOS necessary for our inverter. So if from the library NCSU analog parts, we select the PMOS 4, add it to our schematic, and then we select the NMOS 4 and add it to our schematic as well. Now we have to properly size the PMOS transistor. So select the PMOS, press Q to bring up the property editor, and change the width of the PMOS to twice that of the original value. So the new value of the PMOS width is 540 nanometers. Now the real factor to increase the width of the PMOS by is actually the ratio of the mobility of the electron to the holes, but for simplicity's sake we'll just use two. Now we will add the VDD and the ground to the CMOS inverter schematic. Likewise, we will use the components from the NCSU analog parts. So add the VDD, and then add the ground. Then we use the wire to connect the source of the PMOS to the VDD, the drain of the PMOS with the drain of the NMOS, and the source of the NMOS to the ground. Now we add the bulk connections for our two MOSFETs. The bulk of the PMOS should be connected to VDD. The bulk of the NMOS should be connected to ground. Now we create the input and output pins for the inverter. We use the P keyboard shortcut to bring up the add pin function. First we add the input pin, selecting direction to be input, naming it in. And then next, we add the output pin, naming it out, and do not forget to change the direction of the pin, from input to output. Now we connect the input pin to the gates of our two MOSFETs. and the output pin to the drains of our two MOSFETs. Click Save and Check. As you can see, there are no errors. And now we are going to create the symbol for our inverter. Go to Create, Cell View, from Cell View. And create the symbol for our inverter. We keep the pins from our schematic. And now we just delete everything except the pins. To draw an inverter, 
we select the draw line and then draw a triangle next we draw the circle and then organizing our pins make everything look nice and there we have it the symbol for our CMOS inverter next we will create the layout for our CMOS inverter click launch layout GXL before we begin our layout we have to change our display settings use the keyboard shortcut E and change the start layer from 0 and the end layer to 20 then click OK now let's start adding the PMOS and NMOS use the keyboard shortcut I from the TSMC 02D library we select the PMOS we add it to our layout board and then we select the NMOS and put it down as well Make sure they do not overlap, but not too far apart. Change the width of the PMOS to be the same as it was in the schematic, 540 nanometers. After properly sizing our transistors, we create the bulk connections. Go to Create, Via, select the M1 underscore N for our PMOS connection. Make sure the green rectangle does not overlap with the orange one of the PMOS. And the similarly for the NMOS, we select the M1 underscore P for the bulk connection. Make sure the uh, two instance rectangles do not overlap. Now we connect the gates of the two MOSFETs together for our input. Use the R keyboard shortcut and select polysilicon. And draw the rectangle connecting the two gates of the transistors. Then we connect the two drains of our transistors together using metal one. And then add two metal strips for the BDD and ground. And now we add the input to our inverter. We select create via M1 underscore poly and put it next to the connected two gates to for the input. Now we have to do the DRC design rule check for our MOSFET. Select verify DRC, click OK. Uh, we see that there are actually four errors in our current design. So let's fix those. Let's go back to our design and we see that the edge of the P, uh, sorry, the end well is not overlapping with the bulk connection. So we extend that out using the draw rectangle function, selecting end well and draw it out. Checking DRC again in the command window, we see that there are no errors. After the DRC, we now perform the LVS, Layout versus Schematic. But first, we have to extract our layout. Go to Verify, Extract, and click OK. And now, we go to Verify, LVS, and change the uh, working library to our uh, current one which is project one schematic and then project one extracted and click run and we see the netlist match so the two designs are compatible we could improve the readability of our layout by adding 
labels, we use the L keyboard shortcut. First, we change the font of the label to 0 0.2, so that it's not too big. And then we add the VDD input, output, and ground labels. And add them to our layout. Remember to click it within the uh, metal layers, or else they would get a uh, DRC error. Uh, usually the VDD and the ground are uh, presented as rails, but we will save that for our next time. And that is the layout of our CMOS inverter.